Hello there, it's Caroline here from Useful Graphic Design Tutorials and in this video I'm going to show you how to use the brushes that we uploaded into GIMP in part 1 to create your own paisley pattern. Now I've got GIMP open, what we're going to do first is to open a new image, so click on File and New. This dialog box pops up and I've got the sizing of the image for 640 by 400 and we're on landscape and that's just fine for what we want to do and that's in pixels by the way. So now we have our image and I think what we'll do first of all is to colour in that image because that's going to be our background. To do that click on the bucket fill option and then go over to the foreground colour. That's the one at the top and the background is the one behind. So click on the foreground colour there and choose what colour you want your background. In fact, I'm going to show you how you can change the colour of your background, so don't worry about getting it absolutely right. Let's say that that's what we want, and then click OK. And then you simply click in the centre of this workspace, and it magically makes it all the right colour. Now we're going to create the Paisley images, and to do that we're going to create a new letter to begin with. And you can do that by, let's just see if that goes, that's a little bit bigger into the screen. Click on this icon here, which is create a new layer. This dialog box pops up. I do recommend it as a discipline that you name your layers, because if you've got lots of layers on a project, it can be very confusing as to which pertains to whatever. So I'm going to call this Paisley Shapes. We're going to have two layers it's good discipline to get into. Make sure that the transparency type is toggled. I'll explain why that's um, important later on. And then click OK. So now we have Paisley Shapes layer sitting on top of this background. And the way you know that this is a transparent layer is that you've got a checkerboard. And, and that really, if you see any checkerboards in relation to graphics on the web, that tells you that that um, is transparent background layer. So we now want to access the brushes function and to do that go up to Windows, click on the dockable dialog box and then select the brushes option. And that brush uh, function now snaps into that area there and what you've got is all the brushes that you've got on your GIMP system. But you also want to open up another toolbox and that's Windows, dockable dialog boxes and then the tool options. And what we'll do is we'll make that smaller. We'll detach it from there. And then move that um, down here, clicking on that button there. Uh, the reason why I, I'm doing that down there is because it, th this is the way that I prefer to, to sort of have the layout, if you like. So you've got your choice of brushes over here. And then this tool options um, are the effects that you can apply onto the brushes. Just make sure also that you've got the brushes tool selected here. Um, when I first came um, onto this I had the the bucket fill and so the tool options here relate it to the bucket fill. But we're going to work with brushes so make sure that we click on that there. Now then just select the brush that you want. Let's choose this one here. And make sure you choose the right colour. I say that because there's a couple of things on GIMP that can really trip you up. If you simply, and I'm not going to do it, but if you simply start, you know, pressing out the brushes here now, you will think that you won't have created the, the pattern. In fact, you would have done, but because the colour that you're using is the same as the background, it won't show up. So click on the foreground colour there and make your selection of the colour for the first brushes. And I'm going to use that uh, cream there, yellow, and I OK it. And then you simply start to make your pattern. So here we go. First thing, we want to make it larger. Just use the right bracket on your keyboard. And I'm holding it down here now, you can see. And that's made it bigger. And to make it smaller, just hold down the left bracket. Again, you can see the brush goes small. Let's leave it like that for the moment and choose another brush. This one here is quite nice. We've got our, our brush here now and we want to change the colour again. 
let's make it a pale blue colour. This is not going to be a masterpiece, trust me. <laughs> I'll just increase that slightly. You see, that's, that's beautiful shapes, isn't it? Uh, there again. So let's say now you want to flip or change the angle of that paisley brush. Now how you do that is to go down here to the angle function and when the arrow is up like that it's probably easiest to move. So just change and see what happens. Okay, it's upside down now. You can move it a little bit that way. Make it a little bit smaller. Clever, isn't it? <laughs> so let's put a flower in here now to select the brush. Change the colour. If you want to change the colour, you might want. Uh, I'm going to put in this dark uh, red, maroon. Again, you can change it however you want here. Select OK. Make it a little bit smaller using the left hand bracket. So this is really sort of an accent colour. Uh, just like that wherever you want. If you're going to want to make this into sort of a um, a tiled pattern, I mean some of some of the people that we've worked with have used this for fabric uh, and if that's the case and you want to tile it just make sure that your patterns go into the corner so when you duplicate them it looks like a continuation. I think that's quite sweet isn't it? Just want to show you one more thing um, before we finish. And, and, and this is a very simple, basic paisley pattern, but hopefully it'll give you some idea of what's possible. And it's it's very exciting, it's very clever. Let's just say we want to change the background. To do this we need to go back to the Layers palette. And as you can see there, we've been working on the paisley shape layer. But if we want to change the colour of the background, simply select the background layer go back over to the bucket fill because that's the one that fills with color go to your uh, foreground color here and let's make it lighter let's say quite a bit lighter click OK and then just click in the background there and that's how you can change the color of the background one other thing before we finish here, the reason why we selected the transparent background or the paisley shapes is that because that's transparent you can see that transparency to the blue colour. If we'd made that a, a solid white background you wouldn't have been able to see the blue background and what it looks like so that's why I selected. The final thing we're going to do is just to save this and we're going to save it in two ways. The first is to save it as your master document so that you can come back into this and change anything that you want. Go up to File, Save As, and the dialog box opens, and I'm going to call that by its proper name, Paisley Pattern. Dot C, I beg your pardon, XCF. That's the file format for GIMP. Make sure it's put in the place that you want it to be, and that's going to be Downloads. And then simply press Save. So that is now saved. We'll go check and have a look at that in a moment. That is now saved as a master GIMP document. But let's say you're finished with this, you're happy with it, and you actually want to save it as a PNG. Simply go up to File, Export, Paisley Pattern is the name, PNG is the file you want, here's the place you want to save it in Downloads, go to your PNG, there we go, Export, and now that's exporting that to the place you want to save it. Export Images PNG dialog box comes up, just leave the defaults um, as they are on there and then click export. Now then let's just show you where that is in my downloads folder. So there's the Paisley Pattern Master which you would then go in and open if you wanted to change anything and here's the PNG image that we just created and that's really all there is to it and I hope you've enjoyed that and hopefully seen some of the possibilities 
that you can create with GIMP. That's all for now. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time. Bye.